Hello everybody, my name is Justin and welcome to another episode of Whiskey Tears where we try and review and rank on a tier set of all kinds of different whiskeys, bourbons, and eventually scotches and all the rest. So on today's video, we are doing an interesting looking bottle. We are doing the Broken Barrel Double Barrel 101. Okay, this was a Tasters Club bottle that I got recently, I think a month or two ago. Uh, overall, I don't normally like it when you can't see the whiskey inside of the bottle, but I think this bottle looks really cool. It's like a flat black, but it's also a little bit shiny. It's embossed with the, the Broken Barrel Whiskey. Broken Barrel Whiskey got some guns. It's got that nice gold lettering in there. It's a blend of straight bourbon whiskeys finished with Broken Barrel Staves. So, they finish this with Broken Barrel Staves. They have a mash bill on here of 70% corn, 21% rye, and 9% malted barley. Then the staves it looks like they used was 20% X bourbon staves, 30% X French oak and sherry, and 50% new char number four Broken Barrel Staves. So interesting. I'm not quite sure how they go about finishing them, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm intrigued. So coming in at 101 proof here, we'll see how it is. This is going to be the first one that I think I've ever had that's been finished with broken barrel staves or staves of any kind. So barrel aged with barrel staves. So I guess it, it says it right there. So I guess they put it in a barrel and then they put barrel staves in the barrel and then they age it extra long with those. So it's interesting. I got no idea what it looks like. Got no idea what it tastes like, but we're going to find out in this video. So stay tuned. All right, let's hit the bottle pop. All right, pretty good bottle pop. Okay, first impression of the bottle smell is pretty good. So hopefully it's going to live off to that and continue it as we go. Let's do the pour. All right, broken barrel, double barrel 101, finished with a whole bunch of different X barrel staves. We got the 70% corn, 21% rye, and 13% malted barley. Definitely a little bit darker there. Interestingly enough, we got a much more darker mahogany, darker brown on this one on the color. So let's get into the nose, see what we're getting on the nose. Okay, we got molasses. Molasses with like a peanut brittle, a real sweet peanut brittle. Hmm, some kind of underlying fruit there too. Molasses, peanut, peanut brittle. Almost like a, a dry, a dry apple cider is almost that kind of underlying fruit that I'm getting on. You know, like those, the apple cider beers they make, but the dry version of them. Definitely got some caramel in there from that uh, peanut brittle. So it's got, man, molasses, peanut brittle, the, br the peanut brittle with the caramel that's all hard and caked together. Really nice nose. All right, let's hope the taste is as good as the nose because if it is, we're in for something special here down the hatch. Yeah, it does this weird switch up like halfway through where you think you're on one end and then all of a sudden it like just reverses and you've got something completely different there on the end. So the end is smoky, spicy, kind of a, like a peppercorn and some smoke and just a hint of vanilla. Up front, I think you get a bit of that malted barley for sure. You could definitely get it out of the blast. You get a, just a hint of sweetness up front. I can't quite pick out what it is yet. It doesn't taste molassesy or quite like that peanut brittle that's on the nose. Yeah, you can definitely taste the malted barley in there. I think I'm getting confused from some of the barrel staves that may have been in there from the, the wines. I think that may be where I'm getting that little hint of sweet up front and then it kind of transitions as it goes, almost like you're drinking like a, a sherry. Is sherry one of them? Sherry is one of them. <laughs> so I guess that's where I'm think I'm, I'm kind of getting confused here. Is it, It's got a lot going on. I can't... I, I think it's okay on on the taste. Yeah, it's like halfway through all of a sudden just woo! It really kicks into gear and completely changes. Up front you get the sweet 
uh, just just a little bit of caramel, vanilla, sweetness up front, and then all of a sudden it transitions, and it's like it hits another gear, and it changes into the uh, pepperiness, a bit of the smokiness. You definitely get a lingering of the malted barley that's in there on there, so interesting. Okay, well, let's try it with a dash of water. Okay, with the dash of water, you get a lot of the peanut brittle. Almost like a creamy peanut butter or a chunky peanut butter. Get a lot more of the peanut brittle up front when you add a dash of water in there. Okay, when you add the dash of water, it kind of takes away that that huge transition a bit and mellows it out a little bit. I don't, I don't know if I enjoyed it more. I kind of was get, starting to kind of like that transition a bit just because it's so shocking to your palate and your taste buds. But let's try one more time with the dash of water. Okay, so a lot, a lot sweeter up front. You definitely get some some vanilla shots up front, some caramel shots up front when you when you have the dash of water on there, and then it's much much tamer on the back end as far as the smokiness, the pepperiness, the peppercorns in there, and the malted barley. I think overall is much more muted down when you add the dash of water as well. All right, last try on the rocks here. Nice fresh ice ball in that sucker. Let's see how it is. Okay, similar to the dash of water, actually almost a, it's kind of similar. You definitely get uh, a lot more of the sweetness of the peanut brittle up front when you have it on the rocks. It was a lot more just peanutty with the dash of water and then a lot more of the sweetness of the peanut brittle here on the rocks. Okay, so it's real mellow. More of the malted barley, more of the peppercorn than it was when it had the dash of water in there. Just maybe an undertone of a sweet oaky vanilla underneath, but honestly, not, not a lot there. I'm, I'm not getting nearly as much of the flavors when I add the dash of water to it, so if you really wanna pick apart the flavors, definitely suggest you try this one neat. But the question is now, where am I going to put this on the tier list? Man, I wish, I'll be honest, I wish the palette, the taste, held up with the nose. Because the nose on this thing is, I think, an A tier. It smells awesome. With that molasses -y, real peanut brittle, it smells really good. But unfortunately, it doesn't quite transfer as well to the taste. So I think overall, it's still not bad. Still definitely drinkable. So I think it's going to go down on the C tier. Nothing amazing. Cool idea. I think they're they're definitely on the right track. Maybe I'm just not ready for this type of whiskey yet with these barrel staves added on there. It's definitely interesting. It's a cool bottle to have up on the shelf behind me, but I just think the taste wasn't quite there yet. The nose was primo, A tier. The taste, unfortunately though, the most important part, it's gonna bring it down to a final ranking of the C tier. So that's it for the Broken Barrel Double Barrel 101. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Hopefully you enjoyed the review. If you've had this bottle, let me know what you thought about it down in the comments below. Hit like, hit subscribe. I appreciate it very much, and I'll see you in the next one.